This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Mila dishwasher with an F12 error. And it might be caused by a dirty filter like the one we're showing here. So we're gonna check it out. We're gonna turn off the power by unplugging it or turning off the breaker. We're gonna take out these screws that are holding in the dishwasher to the cabinet. And we may need to twist these little feet to get them um, to either go up or down, probably to have them go up into the dishwasher, remove the screw, and we can pull the dishwasher out. This one has all of its connections behind the dishwasher, so really to shut off the water or anything, you have to get the dishwasher out of the cabinet. I'm gonna unplug it. I'll turn this valve 90 degrees, and that'll shut off the water going in. If you wanna test it, I'll just show you how to do it. You can plug it back in. You can press the buttons to start a cycle. <clears throat> and then you can go and feel the fill valve after it does the draining. You'll hear it drain for about 30 seconds. You might be able to feel the fill valve vibrating. If it's vibrating, that means that it's been activated and it should be letting water in. It may have trouble letting water in because the filter might be blocked with some debris. Um, or it could be just not opening all the way, not letting in enough water. So you might have to still change out the fill valve, but it could be just a dirty filter too, which is easy to just pull out and replace. If you wanna do that, you just turn off the water. You have to unscrew the fitting here. I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips, use some pliers. I'm gonna lefty loosey, kinda of like a hose fitting. So you undo it, pull it off, and then I can see there's some rubber debris in there, probably from the gasket here that had deteriorated over time. So if you clean this out, you may have to get a new rubber gasket that'll fit in there. I'm gonna grab the filter with a pair of needle nose vice grips, and you can see it's covered in black rubber debris that has the gasket that just kind of fell apart over time. So I'm pulling out that gasket and then I can pull out that filter and clean it up and then put it back in. Now, if that doesn't work after you reassemble it, you may have to replace the fill valve. To do that, you just pry apart this case using a flathead screwdriver. And that case is just there to protect the two solenoids from the fill valve. But maybe those solenoids have stopped working or it's just not letting in enough water, or maybe it's always letting in too much water. I'm kind of clamp back the hose with a pair of vice grips to give me some more room to work. I'm using a flathead screwdriver to get the wires exposed and I'll cut them with some diagonal pliers. You can use some wire cutters. I'll pull the wire out. These are the wires that bring power to the fill valve. We're gonna use them to bring power to our fill valve too. Use a pair of pliers to pull this hose clamp out of the way. And we're going to go back about five inches. We're going to cut using the diagonal pliers or wire cutters to cut the hose. And that's so we can remove the old fill valve and kind of make room to put on the new one. And we're just clipping around. Get that clipped off. And here's the new fill valve. We'll put a link in the description below for ordering this. They're only about 25 bucks. We're gonna push it into place, put the hose clamp back on, so we got a nice watertight connection. And now we're going to work on these wires to get them ready. I'm gonna cut them down the middle because I wanna separate the two wires that are inside here. And I'm gonna put little spade connectors on those wires so I can connect them. So now I'm just gonna twist on the silver fill line. This is the one that comes from underneath the sink. In this case, it comes from behind the dishwasher, which is a little bit more unusual. Usually these fill lines come from the wall underneath your sink. I'm just going to tighten up that fitting. This is a compression fitting, so you don't have to put on any kind of thread tape. You can just put it in position, tighten it, get it snug, and that'll be nice and watertight. I'd say probably only about 10% of the applications I see are this one where it's all connected behind the dishwasher. Usually there's access to all this stuff just right underneath the sink, which makes it easier. So now I'm just stripping 
back about a quarter inch of the insulation on each of the two wires that bring power to the fill valve. I'm just using some wire strippers. I'll twist those to get the wire threads tight. These are the little connectors, spade connectors that go on there. They're pretty cool how they go on. You just put the wire inside and then you crimp it down using your crimp tool. A lot of the wire strippers have a crimp tool built into them. I'll put a link for these little spade connectors and for this wire strip tool in the description below too. If you were to buy this um, same fill valve on Romila, it'd be about $220, but with all, even with these tools added, your total cost will be less than 40 bucks. So I'm gonna crimp on this new spade connector and then I'll do one on the other side too. So to do that, I put the spade connector into the tool, and then I feed the wire into the spade connector, and then I just squeeze, and the metal crimps down onto the wire. It's really cool. And then it has a nice plastic insulator around it, so it won't um, short circuit. There's no exposed wire. So now I'll just put those spade connectors onto the terminals, the two terminals, on the fill valve and you can put either one on either terminal there's no polarity issue so you don't have to have it um, a certain one on a certain terminal either way get them on nice and snug and you're pretty much done you've got your connection to the line you've got your wires done we just have to connect it now to the water supply to do that we just add the other end of the silver fill line to the faucet underneath the sink or in this case the faucet that's behind the dishwasher and we can turn the water back on plug it back in put the dishwasher back in the cabinet and you will have a dishwasher that fills correctly again with the right amount of water doesn't overfill it doesn't underfill thanks so much for watching our video today i hope that this video has saved you some time and money and if so could you please press down in the video description below the donation link and send us a donation so we can keep this service going. Thanks again. And if you have any questions about this repair, could you contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.